Hello everyone. In today's video, we'll learn some more basics of entity component systems in the Bevy game engine. We'll be implementing the simple scene of a top-down space shooter with a player ship that periodically shoots lasers at an enemy ship. We'll talk about how one can implement the blinking effect that you can see when the enemy is hit, how a collision is detected between the laser beam and the enemy ship, and the automatic shooting of lasers at a periodic interval. So let's begin. Following from my last video on Bevy ECS, I'll sometimes be referencing bits of code that we used in that video throughout this one. If you're new to Bevy and or Rust and haven't checked out that video, I'd recommend that you do so. Now, carrying on, we use the sprite function to output a bundle consisting of a sprite component and a transform component. Since we're doing a top-down scene, we just need the heading angle or the yaw of our entity to make it face any 2D direction. In addition, we use the position of the entity on screen as the translation in our transform, as well as a scale factor with a vector3 splat function to scale our sprite equally in all directions. Now we build our player and enemy ships by feeding in their respective asset paths, positions, and headings. The player is positioned on the left and faces right, so we input a yaw value of zero radians. The enemy is positioned on the right and faces left, and so here we have a yaw value of pi radians. And then in our setup function, we add a 2D camera and the player and enemy entities. And finally, in the main function, we add our setup function in the startup schedule so that it runs for a single time at startup. And now if we run the app, we should see our player and enemy ship displayed on the screen. Now to make our player shoot lasers at the enemy periodically, we will introduce a timer. We'll call it the shooting timer, which will be a wrapper around a timer object. A timer in Bevy is a convenient way to implement timed events, such as a turret shooting missiles periodically, or a cooldown of some temporary power-up. We set our timer duration to a constant that we have defined, and the timer mode to be repeating, as the shooting has to be repeated periodically. Then, from the last video, we'll use the speed component again to enable our laser beams to fly across the screen. Then we write a function to output a laser beam entity by bundling together the sprite bundle along with a speed component. A laser beam always spawns at the position of the player, and since this is fixed in our scene, we just use the same value as the initial position of our laser beams. And of course, the beams point in the direction that our player faces which is also a constant in our scene, so we input a heading of zero radians for our beams as well. Then we write the simple system that spawns a laser beam at periodic intervals. We check if the duration of our shooting timer has elapsed, in which case the finished function will return true, and when that happens, we simply spawn a new laser beam. Also, we advance our shooting timer by the time that has elapsed since the last frame, using the delta function on the time resource. Again, following from the last video, we use the move entity system to move our laser beams in the direction that they face. We calculate the displacement of a beam using its speed, its forward direction, and elapsed time, and add the displacement to the current position of the beam. If a beam entity travels further than a specific distance from its initial position, we despawn that entity immediately. Then, in our main function, we add the two systems to the update schedule so that they run every update step, as well as initialize the shooting timer resource. And now, if we run our app, we should see the laser beams being spawned at regular intervals. We have our laser beams now, but they do nothing right now. Ideally, they should hit the enemy and cause some damage. So we need to implement some basic collision detection. 
The simplest collision check can be done using a circular collider, and that's what we're going to use. We define a circular collider component, which wraps around the flow 32, representing the radius of our circular area within which we need to detect collisions. We also define a health component, which we'll use to despawn our lasers when they collide into something, and potentially also for our ships once their health depletes to zero after taking damage. For our circular collider, we also define a function collides with, which returns true if our current collider intersects with another one. The intersection check for circles is very simple. We check whether the distance between the centers of the two circles is less than the sum of the two radii, and if that's true, the entities intersect, and otherwise they don't. Then we add the circular collider and health components to our enemy entity. We assign some radius to our collider according to the size and scale of our sprite and a large health value. Similarly, we add a collider to our laser entity and a small health value. Then we define a system to handle our collisions. We query for the entity, the collider, the health and transform components. Then we check for collisions between each such entity having all of these components with any other similar entity. If we find the pair of entities that collide, we add some constant damage to be applied to both. Once the damages to all entities are determined, we run through them again and this time deplete their health according to the damage that they received. If at any time the health goes below zero, we immediately despawn the entity from the scene. This makes sure that our laser beams that are low health get immediately despawned when they hit the enemy. Then in our main function, we add the new handle collision system to our update schedule. And now when the laser beams hit the enemy, they disappear immediately. We confirm that our laser beams do hit the enemy, however, there needs to be some kind of feedback when that happens. In shooter games, we'd normally see some kind of blinking or flashing effect to indicate that a character got hit and received some damage. To implement this, we'll introduce another timer and wrap it in a blink component. We will set the duration of the blinking to some constant and set the timer mode to once as we only want the blinking to happen once when it is triggered. Then in our handle collision system, if the damage received by the entity is greater than zero and it still has non-zero health remaining, we attach the blink component to that entity. We then write a system to handle the blinking. Here we check if the timer wrapped by the blink component has elapsed in which case we set the sprite color to the default white and remove the blink component from that entity. Otherwise, we interpolate the color of the sprite component between a blink color, which is red in our case, and the default white using the fraction of time that has elapsed since the entity was hit. We can also additionally use a blink color intensity constant to increase or decrease the intensity of the blink color. The effect of the linear interpolation here will make the blink more intense at the start of the hit and progressively decrease in intensity and eventually get back to the default as the blink timer elapses. After setting the color of the sprite, we make sure that we increment the timer by the time that has elapsed since the last frame. And finally, we add the new handle blinking system to the update schedule in our main function. And now when we run our app, we should see the blink effect on the enemy when it is hit by a laser beam. One thing that we should also verify is whether or not our enemy gets destroyed if it gets hit a sufficient number of times. I've made all the code available on GitHub and I'd encourage you to clone the repo and run the code yourself with different parameters to verify that this is indeed the case. And that was it for this video. I hope it was helpful in explaining some more basic ECS concepts. If you'd like to see more of such content, please let me know in the comments below.
If you have more questions and or suggestions for future videos, feel free to join my Discord server. You'll find all relevant links in the description of the video. And that's it from me. Until next time, thanks for watching.